Hi, welcome to the Bike Bike Nudge Nudge YouTube channel. You might remember previous traffic stress videos on the channel like Are You Stressed Biking in Traffic? and How Much Stress Can a Less Experienced Rider Tolerate? This video will complete the trilogy of traffic stress videos by quantifying how traffic stress can affect your ability to bike around your city. And spoilers, there will be math. Recently, Oh The Urbanity released a video where they calculated the accessibility to certain services in more suburban areas. In their analysis, they used a circular buffer for their catchment area. This is perfectly acceptable in geography and planning research. Even advanced accessibility algorithms like this one from Antonio Paez use circular catchment areas. The city where you live likely used a 400 meter circular buffer when calculating access to transit stops. O the Urbanity correctly mentions that the actual distance you would need to walk or bike to go from the center to the edge of the circular buffer is longer than the straight line distance. They therefore use a shorter radius for their circular buffer than the distance they would actually expect someone to ride a bike. In this video, I will show what the actual biking distance catchment area looks like compared to the circular catchment area. I will also show how this actual catchment area can shrink if there's a lack of low stress cycling infrastructure. I will demonstrate this with three examples from two cities. I'm only using three examples because of the increased data, setup, and computational time requirements for this type of analysis. So let's look at our first example, Utrecht in the Netherlands. This is the Dom Tower in the center of Utrecht. I've picked this starting point for my first example as the Netherlands is known for its abundant, high quality biking infrastructure. Also, I visited the Dom Tower a few times. The view from the top is excellent and my own Jan used to be responsible for ringing the tower's bells when he was young. This circle represents a five kilometer radius buffer around the Dom Tower. I chose five kilometers because I typically average 20 kilometers an hour when riding my Brompton or Backbeats around my city. Five kilometers divided by 20 kilometers an hour is a quarter of an hour or 15 minutes. A 15 minute catchment area is reasonable and annoys the conspiracy theorists. I promised you there'd be math. If you had a hover bike, you could ride anywhere within that five kilometer circle in 15 minutes or fewer, if you could hover at 20 kilometers an hour. Unfortunately, hover bike technology hasn't advanced beyond a huffy on some fishing line. So we'll have to confine our analysis to the actual streets. If the Dom Tower was surrounded by a perfect grid of north, south, east, west streets, you could ride your bike anywhere within this square. If you do the math, the ratio of the area between the square and the circle is two divided by pi or about 63.7%. There isn't a perfect grid of streets surrounding the Dom Tower, so if you're willing to ride your bike on any street, you can cover about 53.2% of the circle. However, if you're only willing to use the lowest traffic stress streets, the ratio shrinks to 28.2%. I actually find this result a little surprising as I felt very comfortable riding nearly anywhere in the Netherlands. Maybe limiting the traffic stress to the lowest level is a little too harsh, but I'm using the same rules for all three examples. I'll have to accept the results as is until I can take my Brompton to Utrecht and remind myself what it's like to bike there. Anyway, let's take our first example from what's supposed to be a very bike friendly country and compare that to my city, which isn't as well known for its friendliness to people on bikes. My second example starts from what's probably the most bike friendly area of my city. I often ride my bike in this area because of all the low stress bike infrastructure and the many great destinations. So here's the five kilometer circular buffer around my starting point. You may already notice that the river to the north and west might limit the area of our biking catchment area. If I was willing to bike on all the roads in the area, the catchment area would be 54.7% of the circular area. Wait, that's actually one and a half percent more than Utrecht. Is my city more bike friendly than Utrecht? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm in an old part of my city which was built using a grid system of roads. Grid systems tend to allow more direct travel than the twisting medieval roads of essential Utrecht. Also, this is the high stress catchment area and you might not want to ride your bike on some of the roads in the area. If I limit the analysis to the lowest level of traffic stress, the catchment area shrinks to 20.5%. That's nearly 8% lower than the same analysis for Utrecht. So, According to this analysis, the most bike friendly area of my city isn't as friendly as the center of Utrecht if you want low stress biking. I think it's still quite good for North America and I can live with that. Let's move on to our third example. 
If you subscribe to my channel, you might have recently seen a video on my trip to Ikea. In that video, you may have noticed the lack of good biking infrastructure in the area, so let's see how this area compares to Central Utrecht. I'm going to start my analysis right in front of the store. This is the circular 5km buffer. You can already see that there are barriers to biking, even if you're willing to bike anywhere. The freeway to the west has few places to enter across it, as you would expect from a freeway. So, if you were willing to bike on any road, no matter how high the stress, you could cover 43.6% of the circle. If you're only comfortable on roads with the lowest stress levels, you can only cover 3.5% of the circle. Having ridden my bike there recently, I feel that 3.5% might even be a little optimistic. This analysis shows why I advocate for so much safe, low stress bike infrastructure. So much less of your city is accessible to people on bikes when there isn't safe infrastructure. Even a short, high stress section along an otherwise great biking route can be enough of a barrier to people that they will choose to drive instead. The high stress catchment areas in my city are essentially the same as the catchment area for five kilometers of driving. The low stress catchment areas show how limited someone on a bike could be. Yes, there are people like me who will bike nearly anywhere, but we represent only about 4% of the population. More cautious people, or people who drive but would be willing to try biking if there was safe, low stress infrastructure, are limited 40 or 50% of where you could bike on high stress roads. And that's in the most bike friendly areas of a city. The low stress catchment area in the suburban power center was about 8% of where you could drive. I hope you found that analysis useful and will consider giving the video a like. There's a GitHub link in the description to get you started if you want to reproduce this analysis for locations in your city. The road network data are freely available from OpenStreetMap. Feel free to leave a comment about the ratios you find in your city. Thanks for watching.